Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We're back here today in Lone Star Trucking. We're continuing our load of propane up to Fort Smith. Uh, I don't remember how far we got to go. It's, let's see if we can get that to come up here. Maybe it's F6. I don't know. We got 26 hours remaining. So let's go ahead and get the rig fired up and get her into gear here and uh let's get into the cab probably need some lights too i suppose all right let's uh let's head out here hopefully everybody is having a wonderful day we did get fuel so we're good there Trying to remember what we did in the last episode. It's gonna be good after this semi. I mean, we could have turned on our blinker. Rocking and rolling. We got, oh, we got 360 miles to go. Let's get out here on the highway, get fired up, let's get moving. Oh, thankfully that guy got over. He's hauling a BP truck too. Or trailer, hauling a BP trailer. Excuse me. Well, if you didn't know, the, the news came out from SCS that not only are we waiting on, what is it, Missouri and Iowa, but the next state they're working on from the screenshots, the trailers, the messages, they didn't officially say it, but it looks like it's going to be Louisiana. Oh, yeah, we can pull in for an inspection. Hey, we can't drive over there. Go straight. Recomputing. Yeah, so how exciting is that that the next state they're working on, they've kind of released it. They kind of told us what it was as being Louisiana. I mean, I figured so from the screenshot on the YouTube video was a magnifying glass over Louisiana. There was a bowl of like shrimp gumbo. Looked like some bayous and stuff like that in there. So Yeah, I mean, we could pull into the way station. Or we couldn't. There we go. Hey, 68,000 pounds. Nice. Man. Like 700 more pounds and we would hit the magic number. 69,000 pounds. Maybe it was 800 pounds. I don't know. It was close. Hit the wrong button. Yeah, we're going to take the fast travel here. I'm sure we have one of those. It's fine.
Got the signal. It's fine. Listen, we're just trusting that right. we're past that guy. That's the one thing that I'm terrible at driving and racing games about is using the amount of brake pressure. Because, you know, like in a normal driving car, I'm very good at... Listen, I've ridden with me, so I'm very good with, at braking <laughs> and it, it telling it telling myself when I need to brake. It, it, listen, I know what I'm saying, uh, but in the games, I'm just terrible at it. I'm also terrible about pushing the clutch in all the way. It's one of my bad habits. I've got to work on that. So hopefully everybody was okay with a two-part episode here for this more freedom trucking. All right, I'm sorry. We're in Lone Star Trucking, and we should be going 60, not 69. I mean, you know, giggity and all that, but let's see if there's anybody beside us. There isn't. Let's go ahead and get over. So, left. yeah, we'll keep left. So when you all are traveling, what's your favorite, like, radio station to live to? Just, you know, comment below what kind of radio station, like, you love to listen to while you're traveling. You know, do you just listen to the regular radio stations uh, as you drive through the states or, you know, in your state or whatever? Or do you turn on some... Like I have, I have satellite radio in, in my Durango, so a lot of times I, if I'm traveling for a long distance, I'll turn on the satellite radio and listen to that. So do you listen to your satellite radio, or do you, you know, do you listen to the local radio? Probably need to downshift here. Get up to speed. Or do you listen to Spotify or YouTube Music or Amazon Music if you happen to have Amazon Music? Listen, dude, I need to get over. I need to get over. You're there. You need to listen. Look at my blinkers, dude. Look at my blinkers. That is my bad. So yeah, like when I'm traveling, I generally listen to satellite radio and I turn it on. My favorite station on there is probably Red, White, and Booze. That's the station I listen to the most on satellite radio. Uh, I think it's, man, I don't know, 300 something, 340, something like that. I don't know, on Sirius XM. Sometimes when I'm just driving through town, I'll put on the uh, Spotify or YouTube music. I usually use YouTube music. But yeah, that's what I use. And then I just switched one of my stations. I had the Highway Country on Sirius XM was uh, one of my country stations that I listened to. And I was like, you know what? I don't necessarily listen to modern bro country for the most part. I mean, it's not all bro country on there, but a lot of it is. 
so I put on Prime Country, which is country from the 80s and 90s, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I normally would listen to anyway, so. But if we're going through, like, all the, the channels I have on the Sirius XM, so the Durango has, I think, what is it, like, 12 channels you can program on the radio for, you know, AM, FM, satellite, and let's see, I use, like, Octane, Turbo, um, Lithium, uh, Rock the Bells, Shade 45, which is Eminem's channel, Rock the Bells, I think, is LL Cool J's, and then there's, what is the other one? I can't remember the other one. It is uh, Bly, man, not coming to me right now. We're going to start slowing down here. Keep right, and then exit right. I think it's Sirius right. XM Fly. It's another rap channel. So I have like three rock channels, three rap channels, and then I have three country channels, which are Prime Country, Outlaw Country, and uh, Red, White, and Booze. Keep left. Turn that turn signal off. And my last three channels are Real Jazz, uh, 40s Junction, and one of the classical channels. I think it's symphonies. Hey, I'm, I'm a, like, I got an eclectic taste of music. I'll listen to just about anything. Except I don't listen to that much pop music, I guess, anymore. I don't... I guess I just don't get in, into it as much as I used to when I was younger. I would say for the most part, it's mainly country. And I'm sorry to Mike check when he was over here visiting that I listened to so much country music. <laughs> it probably drove him crazy. Like, what are we going to listen to? How about country? So yeah, that's what I listen to when I drive and I cruise and, and, when it, it's it's tough in in American truck sim or recording videos because I don't use I don't I what is that uh, I don't use Epidemic Sound or one of those services that allows me to play music for a cost per month. So I just get to cruise and and either talk to you or just not talk at all. And I don't know if if me not talking is better or worse. So, I do want to hear what y'all love to listen to down in the comments. You don't have to comment, but if you want to and you want to say, hey, this is what I normally listen to when I'm traveling or riding along or whatever, I'd love to hear it. It's always great to find out what other people like, for me at least. Like when Mike Check was over here from Australia, and he, I just asked him, and he did the same for me. Like asked me all sorts of questions about the U.S. I asked him all sorts of questions about Australia, just to learn how you know, like what the differences, what the differences are, and all that. That billboard changed. Did you all see that? Gladiator Two, November twenty fourth. I love this mod pack I use for this because they do change the billboards to things. It's amazing. I love it. We're going to... Oh, you son of a biscuit, dude.
Well, imagine my face when the game crashes and I come to a screeching halt. So yeah, another game crash, which was weird. Let's get back up to speed here. Hey, that's where, it was about where we crashed. After that guy had pulled over in front of us and we had hit them. We're not going to stop for the viewpoints here. I stopped for those in my other profile. Yeah, this is about where we crashed. Yep. Speed limit 75. Yeah, so that was awesome. Getting her going again. You know, it takes a minute for you to get back up to speed in a semi. I do love shifting through the gears. I know I said that in the in the last couple of videos, but it's so much fun. If you've never driven a manual car, you're missing out like you are definitely missing out it takes a little bit to learn to start out with and i learned and i think i said this before in a like a 1969 volkswagen beetle was the car i learned to drive a drive stick with and learning how to do that it was just it it made the it made driving so much fun to be able to shift through the gears and feel you know i don't know in control of the car and Ever since I learned on on the Beetle, I've just loved driving a manual transmission car. I do miss having, before I had the Durango, um, I had a, well, my car was a 300, a Chrysler 300 Sport with S, and my son, AJM, the driver of the 51 car, oh, look at the airplane. Uh, he had, I, I had got it for him a mini before he went off to uh, boot camp for the Marines. And when he came back, he was like, I don't really want a mini anymore, which is fine. And I honestly, I love that car as much as it was just a little tiny driving around town. It was so much fun to drive. Um, it was a six speed manual transmission. I should have kept it. Looking back, I should have just kept that car. It probably would have been paid off by now. And, uh, yeah, so it was a lot of fun to drive. I kind of, I'm thinking about once I get the Durango paid off in three years or so, uh, getting something else like that just to drive around town and manual transmission, maybe another Mini, and just, you know, scoot it around town. I don't know, something. If I could find a manual transmission pickup truck, that'd be awesome. I went to turn, I went to hit the turn signal on the left side of my steering wheel. There isn't one, it's not there. So yeah, if you've never driven a manual transmission car, I, I, I feel like you're missing out. Like, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to just cruise. It can be a pain in the ass in the city, but, you know, it's, it's still fun. Hills. Hills are where it's not fun. That'd be the, the unfun part of a manual transmission. I am trying to decide what I want to do. So, for context, 
I try, I kind of changed the way I did things on the channel this year, and I went to a seasons approach. And I played a bunch of different games, did a bunch of different seasons in them. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do that for next year. If that's what I want to continue on with, or do I want to just play a huge season of two different games, or a huge season of one game and then multiple seasons of another game. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, but we'll see what the new year brings. How about that? Exit right. And we are getting close to our drop. Turn left. Hey, we're dropping at the 7-Eleven. Get ready to turn right. Up here. Interesting. I, I'm not complaining. This should be an easy drop. Turn right. I believe we right have to here. come right here. Now drop the load and go. <laughs> I bet that's what you say to all the girls. Alright, let's see. Hey, right in front of us. I ain't sad about that. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we made it without another crash in game or uh, of the game. So we made 43,000, which is awesome. Let's check that out. We're almost to level 13. We made a lot of XP on that one. So let's check out how much profit we have. Okay, we got... Is this where we check to see? Where's our money's at? No. Yes. No. no. Oh, we have 118,000. There we go. Nope. We've got $118,000. <laughs> Stop clicking on it. That's how much money we have. So we're getting very close to kind of the next milestone of either buying our own trailer or getting enough money to buy a truck, a driver, get a driver, hire a driver and buy a truck. So, oh, also we have to figure out if we need to do a, a garage, if we need to expand our garages. So let's take a look at that real fast. And if we go to garage manager, we have one. So we do have the ability to hire two drivers. And if we wanted to... Mod dealer... We have a Kenworth, and 68000 So right now, we could hire a driver, and I think, let's do it. Well, yeah, let's, let's hire a driver first. Make sure we can do that. Driver manager. And recruitment agency. Do we have the ability? We have one. Hire a driver. And hire this driver. We're going to put him here in this spot. Okay, let's go back here, 
And let's go to company. Truck manager. Truck dealers. Mod dealer. Fleet config. And purchase. Put them in Corpus Christi. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do for our driver is we're going to leave them. Oh, uh, you know, we should probably uh, driver manager. We should probably put them on high value cargo to start. They already have one. So let's get them going on high value cargo. And then we'll work on distance after that. So high value cargo, long distance, and then probably hazardous cargo. So that's what we'll start doing there. And we will work for the next time. We're going to work towards getting a trailer or we will work towards getting another driver. But hey, we're going to get out. Well, th that's going to do it for this episode of Lone Star Trucking. I'm super excited to continue it. Hopefully you had an, a, good, uh, a good time hanging out. Don't forget to comment about what station you or what kind of music you listen to or what stations you listen to when you're just traveling and riding in the car, driving in the car, whatever. So I appreciate you hanging out. And until next time here in Lone Star Trucking, take care.